Turbo Fog just broke standard, and it's all because of one card. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are going today to talk about the Turbo Fog deck, the card that is in, that is in there that broke standard. What's going down with Nexus of Fate? Now, you guys may remember when Dominaria had their buy a box exclusive card, I said that this was a bad idea. I looked at the Minotaur and said this card's okay, but it could lead to problems. Then, when Nexus of Fate came along, I put out a video saying, this, this is a really big problem if it enters into standard. And I talked about how it had the potential to get there. I got a lot of comments saying, oh no, you know, don't worry about it, that's not going to happen. Seven men, oh, it's definitely, it's definitely not competitive. And lo and behold, we have a Turbo Fog deck using Nexus of the Fate, four copies, that just totally swept the Pro Tour. So, I'm not the kind of guy who says, I told you so. I'm going to leave that to the boss monster. Surprise, surprise, I was right. I warned you that this would happen. And here we go. This is what you get. All right, now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about what's going down. So the Turbo Fog deck, the concept behind it is to basically just go, I am going to fog over and over. It's a, it's a deck concept that's been done in the past. The idea is to just stall the game out Keep the, uh, keep the board kind of landlocked in terms of you can't get to me and hit me with your creatures while I set up my win factor. That's, that's the scenario that we're dealing with here. So there are a couple of different win cons that people are using with this, but none of that matters. The real thrust of what I want to talk about here is the problem with Nexus of Fate. Because it doesn't matter what archetype is running what. What matters is that Nexus of Fate, overnight almost, essentially overnight, became the most valuable card in standard. At this point right now, it's the most valuable card. When you look at the deck lists for Turbo Fog, it's the most expensive card in it. You cannot get Nexuses of Fate from booster packs. The only way you get Nexus of Fate was to have purchased a box of 2019 and get it as your buy a box promo. That's it, other than buying it on the secondary singles market. So, Friday night, we happen to be talking about Nexus of Fate, and it's $45. Yesterday, all of a sudden, it's jumped up to $60 Canadian. These are absurd prices, and this is just the beginning of the problem. When we look at this card, it's not in the set. The, the amount of these are finite. They're already out there. Wizards of the Coast prints cards about roughly 18 months out, a year and a half out. That's how all this is planned. So reprints of any of these cards, these buy a box exclusive promos, are going to be far in the future. They will do nothing to satisfy the demand increase for while this card is in standard. It is in a deck that totally dominated the Pro Tour. The numbers that I've heard in terms of the matchups is it has a 75 to 82% win chance of winning. That's the win percentage. That's how strong this deck is. And you can see it in the insane demand for Nexus, where all of a sudden, Nexus is now worth more than Karn. It's worth more than Teferi. They're all housed in the same insane deck, where you just cast multiple variations. For those of you who don't know what Fog is, basically there was a green spell back in the day. It cost one green. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Now, they don't print the exact same Fog anymore. Now you generally get it for a green and a colorless to have the fog effect maybe an extra mana more if you want some another ability or sometimes they even tack an extra ability on but either way fog is effect is something that costs roughly two now magic and it's a basically green blue build mainly where people are just fog 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 take extra turn take extra turn take extra turn because you're using this also with the legendary take extra turn rare card now if you'll notice that one is doesn't have a huge massive price because it's not such a finite supply but nexus of fate incredibly finite supply. Now, I don't know if they did this intentionally. I don't know if Wizards of the Coast is just foolish and tried to skirt the line and screwed up, or if they knew, if they knew this kind of thing would happen, and they did it intentionally, and they just gave us a different one with Dominaria, weaker to kind of Trojan horse the concept in. Now, personally, I'm leaning towards ineptitude. 
I I don't th- I think the Wizards probably thought it was on the cusp, but didn't expect it to bust into standard the way it did. I don't think that Wizards has a really good handle on anymore about what's going to happen in standard. They used to have a league that they used to pre-test things, and they still have it if I understand correctly. But I believe it's it's not as effective as it used to be. It's shrunk down. Doesn't have the same people working in it, so it's not as effective. Their future league is not as effective. They may have actually uh, shortened the amount of time that they test in advance and as well. And that kind of thing, it shows in what's going on with the card development because they make these kind of mistakes. There was a lot of it going on in the Kaladesh block. There was a lot of errors being made by these guys. So, is it a situation where it's malicious? 100%. No, I think that they they clearly want to design a desirable card. But if it's too disruptive, like this, the what I'm waiting for to really judge, and this is where it's going to get really ugly, guys. And this is my true, my true fear deep down underneath about where this is going is in to the mana bases. Because right now we're dealing with Nexus of Fate, which is just for particular blue builds, right? But Wizards of the Coast knows, and everybody knows, the land bases are really important to Magic decks. And a lot of the important rares that exist for decks, I should say, a lot of the important lands that exist for decks exist in that rare slot. It's actually one of the reasons that I talk about um, Magic Arena and say that it's slanted against the player and to take advantage is that they'll give you free commons on commons and mythics, but it's the rares where all the mana base comes in, all the dual lands and things that you need. That's the sweet spot, and they know it. So with the situation I'm fearing is where they're going to make a dual land style land, like a red white land or a blue green land, whatever whatever combination it is, just something that's good enough to make it into standard where you need this in your deck. And because it's not just for a particular build, like Nexus of Fate applies to like Turbo Fog, but and there's a couple other builds you can put it in, but it doesn't have nearly the same wide scope appeal as a land. So my fear is that they're going to move into the land bases. And when they do that, it's going to get even uglier. There, There is a threshold where standard will just be, become unplayable because it's unpayable. You know what I mean? And what I mean by that is you, you can't afford to pay. It sounds kind of ridiculous. I just like the way it sounded. Anyhow, it's a situation where standard will just become too cost restrictive. You just literally can't get into it. Your options are you've got to try and buy these cards on the secondary market. And if everybody knows these cards are going to be necessary, they're going to go up in value every time, right? They're going to start out with a higher price tag. Nexus of Fate started out with a higher price tag than the Minotaur promo because people knew it would just be even more desirable to Commander players without even automatically realizing that it would slot into Standard. So the biggest fear that I have is that they're going to move into the mana base. But another considerable, and this is like my second biggest one, is that you will need multiple of these exclusive cards to start building your decks. So when you look at a Magic deck, it, land base aside, like if you look at the Turbo Fog deck, it's actually only running 10 different magic cards in it, right? That, that's what we boil it down to because people run a lot of copies of things for redundancy. You don't see a lot of decks where you only see one ofs or two ofs. So as a result, a lot of magic decks are only made up of maybe 10 cards, 12 cards, 14 cards. And even if you get really generous and start including the different kinds of lands and everything, maybe you'll get up to having like 16, 20, 20 different types of cards in the entirety of the deck. And that's including your lands. So now if we run into a situation where there are multiple exclusive buy boxes that are needed for standard, especially if they go in the same deck, then that is just going to reach absurd levels where it's like you have the, you have the option of, am I going to buy four booster boxes of every set that comes out? Like at what point does the game collapse under this? It can only get so expensive before it becomes untenable and is no longer workable and standard no longer becomes an entry point for players. Wizards of the Coast, Wizards of the Coast plan is go, here's an open house deck, get a Planeswalker deck, get a deck builder's toolkit, build a standard deck, come out to FNMs, come play in standard showdowns, and then end with the store championship. That is the model that they have for players coming into the game. That's the ramp path, okay? That's all the individual things that they want them to do. That all involves standard. I mean, they have standard showdown. It's about standard. They're not looking to push modern, and they're looking to cater to things like modern and commander, but they're not looking to push it. 
their product is standard. That's where they ma- that's where they make their bank selling all the booster boxes to people. So they want to push that format. And that's what's going on with this, right? They want to keep pushing the booster box sales for standard. But if standard collapses because of it, then their main gateway that they're putting their resources behind that gets people in shuts down. And if people are coming in through Commander and other things, then all the resources that they're putting into this are just being used to basically strangle their baby. Instead of trying to grow it and keep it healthy, they're just strangling. Take the, take the baby, I hurt you. Magic is like real life. Two weeks ago, I was broke and I was single. And my friend said to me, hey, you want to buy a time twister? And I said, no, I'm broke and I'm single. I can't. I got away from my paycheck. And then I matched this girl. We started talking, having a good time. And we were talking about our lives. And I told her about this opportunity to buy a time twister. And she said, that is way too much money to spend on a fine cardboard rectangle. So then I got my paycheck. And I called my friend up. And I said, hey, you got that time twister? And he said, yep. So I bought it, and I told my girl about it, and she said, I am not going to date someone that spends that much money on cardboard. And so I'm back to exactly where I was two weeks ago. And together, we are the sixth color of magic.